I hope you guys have all been well. Uh, welcome back to Fertility Factor Fiction, the live show where we answer all your questions and always go over a topic to discuss whether or not that topic is uh, relevant and makes sense. Um, we have multiple cameras. I'm actually looking at three different cameras here. So if I'm not looking directly at you guys, forgive me, it's because I'm looking at each of these different cameras. And uh, we will uh, definitely try and attend to everyone asking any questions. So um, tonight's topic was whether or not HCG, the human chorionic gonadotropin, the pregnancy hormone, um, which we typically use as a trigger shot to induce ovulation, can actually improve the chances of success when doing intrauterine insemination. So I know we talk a lot about IVF, but actually we do a lot more IUI, intrauterine insemination, than um, we do IVF in any program that you go to, mainly because the costs are so much lower, unless you're in a mandated state in the US where the insurance companies have to cover the cost of IVF. So because we do a large volume of IUI, I, I always felt it's important to touch on those topics as well. And this one was really important because there are two ways to do the insemination process. One is to allow a patient to either make eggs naturally or with medication and then release the eggs naturally, which some people believe is sort of beneficial or, or a better option. And then other option is to actually trigger the release of the eggs and the third there is actually a third option and that is to let someone naturally trigger and do the triggered option with adding in the hcg so as a follicle develops it starts out relatively small usually you'll start being monitored around day three or in some cases we just allow people to use an ovulation predictor kit when the egg is getting ready to be mature, either based on ultrasonographic evidence of its size or hormonal evidence that it's beginning to release, you then have the option to um, allow the egg to surge and release on its own because your LH hormone spikes and that's the signal to release the egg. Or you can do this via, um, you just came undone there. Or you can do this via the option of adding in an HCG trigger, and that HCG trigger will allow you to force the egg to ovulate. And that's often important in someone who's got uh, an ovulation or oligoovulation, for example, women with polycystic ovarian syndrome. So the question was, is one of those three choices better? Allowing you to naturally trigger on your own, allowing you to trigger exclusively with the use of HCG, or to do both at the same time. And so I started doing some research for this because I really wanted to answer the question for myself. And it turns out that um, there's actually a really great Canadian study from um, some of our near and dear colleagues uh, in um, a nearby clinic in the Hamilton area. Uh, and that's in Ontario, Canada. If those of you who are following us are from uh, outside of Canada. So uh, they ran a study um, uh, about three years ago where they looked at about 365 cases of intrauterine insemination cycles and these cycles were a mixed uh, group of patients who had either taken clomiphene which is clomid they had taken letrozole or femera or they had taken uh, the controlled ovarian hyperstimulation protocol, which are the injectable medications where you're doing the FSH or LH shots, and those are being used to improve the growth of the eggs, the number of the eggs that grow. Um, it also, of course, helps your lining develop too. And so they compared in that retrospective study, so they were looking back at patients that had already undergone the procedure and they compared in that study what happened between the patients that naturally surged, those that had a HCG trigger and those that had the combined trigger of natural and HCG. Now it's important to know one critical thing here and that is when you naturally trigger we typically will do the insemination 24 hours after. So for example we'll tell people to check for their ovulation with the urine stick in the morning and then if they're positive they call us and the next day in that morning we'll do the in insemination. When we typically do 
a HCG trigger, we normally allow 36 hours after the trigger because most commonly you'll ovulate around 36 to 40 hours. Um, having said that, they have done studies that show that there is no difference between a 24 and a 36 hour insemination, so either one is acceptable. We traditionally do the 36, but there's nothing wrong with doing a 24, and that's completely reasonable. So uh, there's good sort of biologic plausibility or believability behind the, the methods that are being used here. So 365 cycles of IUI that they examined, and they actually showed in this study that when you gave the HCG, it resulted in a much higher success rate. So their overall pregnancy rate was 18.1%, which was 66 out of the 365 patients. And from that 18%, when they sub-analyzed it, they showed that the, and this was for clinical pregnancy rates, so you're seeing the heartbeat uh, go in the infant on ultrasound around six to seven weeks. So they showed that when you compared the recombinant HCG, for the intrauterine insemination compared to just the natural surge, it was 18.2% versus 5.8%. So almost a threefold increase or more than threefold increase in success rate when you added HCG instead of just the um, natural trigger. But when you compared patients that got an HCG trigger and they naturally surged, you then got 30.8% versus 18.2%, which is quite a huge jump. So 30.8% for an IUI with letrozole or clomid is, uh, or even the shots, is actually quite substantial. That's a high number and very impressive. And that was true when they compared it against the HCG only trigger or against the natural trigger. So it was 30.8%. Um, versus 18.2% when they compared it against the um, nat against the HCG alone group, and it was 30.8% versus 5.8% when they compared it to the natural surge group. So they then went on and did another analysis looking at just the patients that did the injectables, and when they looked at the patients that just did the injectables, it's a very substantial difference. So the pregnancy rate there was 21.7% when you do the HCG trigger, which we always have done when we're doing the injectable meds, versus just 2.1% when you allow those patients to naturally trigger. So I'm sure some of you are saying, well, natural is better, why is it like this? So there are probably several theories behind this. Number one, it's very possible that when you're following a natural trigger, your brain is actually recognizing estrogen levels. It doesn't actually know the size of your eggs. And if you have two or three eggs developing, your estrogen level goes higher, your brain sees that it's higher, and it starts sending the release signal potentially before it's ready. So doing the HCG trigger can further help mature the follicles and the lining to prepare it for that implantation and the insemination, natural insemination. Number two, there are potential effects where there are um, LH kits, the urinary kits that you're using to test if you're ovulating, and those kits may be false negative. In other words, it's not showing you that you're ovulating, but you actually are, and it can be false positive as well, where it's saying you're ovulating, but you actually are not. So by taking the HCG, you're adding to that effect and getting an improvement in the number of patients that are actually releasing their eggs. So between those different reasons, they're definitely seeing a much more substantial increase in the number of patients who are getting pregnant. And again, those numbers are very substantial, 30.8% versus 18.2% and 5.8% depending on which trigger technique we were examining. So it looks like your best bet if you're using the shots is to do the HCG trigger, which we have always done, but they're saying now that your best bet when you're doing the oral medications, letrozole or Clomid, is to allow your body to naturally ovulate, but then also do an HCG trigger and then show up the next day for the insemination. Yes, you will only be at the 24 hour mark for your insemination or roughly 24 hour mark from the time that you've had your LH trigger, 
but you'll actually have a substantial improvement in success because we know that the 24 and the 36 hour inseminations don't make a difference. So factor fiction this week was, does the HCG trigger help in patients doing IUI to improve the success rates? And the answer is yes. It is a fact that the HCG trigger does improve your success rates. And so because of this research that we've done, we're actually changing our protocol to add HCG triggers in, even when you're doing a natural um, stim cycle or if you're using letrozole or Clomid, everyone will go home with a Ovidrel shot, which is from our friends from Serono. They make a already pre-mixed vial in a syringe. It's very easy to inject. You'll get your LH trigger from the urinary kit. It'll show you when you're surging. You additionally take your HCG trigger and we should be seeing quite a substantial improvement in our already really great success rates. I think this technique combined with all the vitamins that we use, um, the close follow-up of the patients, all the healthy habits, minimization of you know smoking, drinking, uh, drug use, or elimination of them more than minimization. And then in addition, that Zymo technique I've talked about before where we are using a sperm DNA preparation technique that minimizes the amount of sperm DNA damage. I think all together, those should combine to give very robust insemination rates. And I'm hoping that by next year, we may be able to publish something showing that our success rates have really taken a leap forward um, compared to where they've already been, which has always been good, but I think we can really get them to something we haven't seen before. So yes, it is a fact that doing the HCG trigger in addition to your natural trigger will benefit you when doing pills. And when you're doing the injectables, you should definitely be doing the HCG trigger. That is the best way to go when you're doing the shots. So with that, I'm ready to take some questions. Um, Tarek from Ibrahim Strategies Group is here as always, and he's gonna be reading to me, and then I'm gonna attack Facebook from the camera. So um, 